Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unbox Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Thermalrite LGA1700 BCF, or Buckle Reducing Device. Kindly sent in to us by one of our viewers, so let's uh, check it out and see what it's all about. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Thermalrite LGA1700 Buckle Reduction Bracket. This is a design for LGA1700 sockets for the 12th and 13th gen Intel processors, which use the LGA1700 mounting system. Now, as some of you may already know, as you can see on the board, you've got this horrible toggle latch thing, which is absolutely disgusting, and most people absolutely hate it, and it does give you one of those unnerving crunches when you actually try to fasten your processor down. Now, one of the downsides of this particular mounting method is because the new Intel processors are a little bit more elongated or rectangular in shape, it doesn't equally distribute force across the entire socket, which can cause things such as boards bending and all those kinds of things, and also potentially when you mount your cooler, you can get a slight discrepancy in mounting pressure across the entire face of the heat shield. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the thermal right prevention method, which is uh, this here. Comes in a very nondescript box, as you can see, LGA 1700 BCF. I'll put some links in the video description. This was kindly sent to us by Rick H. Thank you very much, Rick, for sending this over and finally got around to doing it. I have done some testing before and after, so I will be showing you some thermal results. Although, to be completely honest with you, I'm not entirely sure it's going to make a huge amount of difference, at least at the moment, because the board and the processor and all that is basically brand spanking new. I think this is one of those things that as it time goes on, it generates more heat and the board generally starts to buckle or sag. That is when you start to notice the increase in temperatures. So at this point, it may not show any real improvement at all, but we'll find out after we've done it. So we go through today, see what we get in the box, do the installation, and then we'll come back with some testing to see if it makes any initial results. And then I'll probably do a follow-up video or at least comment later on to let you know how things are going. So what do we get inside the box? Well, not a great deal, as you'd expect for some of the reasons, like 10 pounds here in the UK. So it's one of those things where it's a worthwhile thing to do just for the sake of getting rid of that awful clamp. Anyway, I hate those clamps. Anyway, I digress. So in the box, you get the actual mount itself, which has been nicely machined and is available in two colors at the moment. So you've got this black version, there's also like a silvery gray version. So potentially you might want to have one which fits in with your theme, although realistically, you're never gonna see it anyway, because it's gonna be underneath your CPU cooler. You also do get some included thermal paste. So to be honest with you, for the price of 9.99 at the moment, to get a uh, thermal paste sachet, which is this Thermalrite TF, seven i believe it is yep tf7 normally you pay that sort of amount for thermal paste anyway so to get the bracket included as well and also you get a tool as well because the mounting method uses the torx t20 sockets or screws so there is a little tool included to do that so that is pretty much it they don't really include much of a manual other than something very very basic and there is a video actually on amazon site to go through the whole thing but i figured i'd do it anyway just to show you and report back on my experience so with that done, that's the intro out of the way. Let's get on and fit this thing. So as you can see, I've already removed my CPU cooler. Uh, there is the mountings for the back plate. So I'm gonna leave that in place. So what you wanna do is to release the tension off the processor to begin with. So press down on your lever, move out to the side. So it disengages and leave that in the upright position. You can, if you want to lift this lid up it's entirely up to you. But I'm gonna go ahead now and undo the four screws. These you should find aren't done up particularly tight anyway. And the, the supply tool should do the job pretty well. Yeah, these are pretty loose to start with, to be honest with you. I think that side is undone, so I should be able to lift that off. Yeah, there we go, put that to one side. You will need to keep hold of this mechanism because if the board ever suffers any uh, damage and you need to RMA it, then you will need to send that back. Don't worry about the actual CPU bracket backplate falling off. That is kind of welded to the back of the motherboard. So you've got no issues there. So what you'll need to do is to keep the four screws which come out of the retention bracket because we're gonna need those now. And what we need to do is gently place this over the top of your processor. It'll only physically fit in one way, although it does have a marking on there saying LG1700, so you can't go too far wrong. Pop the screws back in. Of 
That bracket actually does look nice on this motherboard. It fits in very well. The, uh, the design is very, very similar. So what we're gonna do now is just do a couple of screws, a couple of turns on each corner. And then just rotate, go all the way around until the screws will no longer go any further. And give them a nice little cinch. Do them in opposing sides if you wish. Just make sure they are nice and tight. No wiggle or anything like that. So that is effectively it. So now we need to do is to apply your thermal paste and uh, put your cooler back on and then we can do some testing. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're back and it's all done and there are some very, very unusual results. Now, I would love to be able to say this is great and much like pretty much everyone else who's reviewed or tried one of these products that they've either had either kind of no difference at all or they've increased their actual temperatures in terms of they've reduced the peak temperatures under load. My story is somewhat different and it's a little bit confusing. I don't quite understand it. So I'm hoping that if you're still watching this, that uh, maybe you listen to this bit and work out what is going on and maybe just leave me a comment in the comment section so you can help me understand what the heck is happening. So there's four different slides I've got, which I'll be putting up on the screen, which you'll see. The first one is the original test. So this was yesterday and this was kind of last night before uh, we went to bed. You can see how much wattage we're using. So we peaked here. The processor used somewhere in the region of about 162 watts, 164 watts, something along those lines. And you can see the Cinebench score. You can see the package temperatures, CPU temps, etc., etc. So it's all going to be on the screen so you can see all that. So that was our kind of baseline reading. So we were in the region, I believe it was something about 78 degrees, 76 degrees package temperature, which I figured was uh, okay. So I wasn't expecting a, a great performance increase. So next we're going to go to the first test actually with the contact frame installed on our 13500 and basically run exactly the same tests again. Now I don't know if there were any Windows updates last night from what I can tell looking at the logs in the system there doesn't appear to have been. So the first test I run the CPU was getting closer to 90 degrees Celsius so we're at least 10 degrees hotter which is extremely unusual. So I put this down to being possibly thermal paste application or something along those lines. So long story short, basically we've got the same Cinebench score, give or take a few points. So I thought, right, I'll take it all apart, redo the paste. Then I went along and tried it with MX4 paste, which is what I had originally, thinking that maybe the difference in temperature and also the wattage, which had peaked up nearly 30 watts, maybe that was something to do with it. So not entirely sure, redid it all, took it all apart, put it back together with the MX4 compound and basically got exactly the same result again within kind of margin of error territory. Again, we are still using some of the reason about 180 plus watts up from our previous 160 plus watts. So there's something very odd. We're getting basically exactly the same Cinebench score, but we are using a considerable amount of extra wattage, which is obviously then giving additional heat. So finally I thought, well, maybe I've mounted this incorrectly. So I took it all apart, remounted it, did the exact same test again, and literally I could replicate the results all day long, regardless of thermal paste, mounting pressures, etc., etc. I tried winding the screws back out, reseated the CPU, all those kinds of things. And there were about 10 to 15 different versions I did of this, all of which basically replicated the exact same results. So I thought, right, I'm gonna give up. I'll go back to my original setup because that, in theory, as we've seen from slide one, was the best performing, or at least thermally. So I went ahead and put the original fittings back on, put the CPU back in, fresh application of MX4 compound, same cooler, same everything, run the test again, and as you can see, we're basically exactly the same again. So I have got no idea what is going on here. I've not done anything in the BIOS, I've not done anything with fan profiles, anything like that, and basically the BIOS is set to standard. I've set it as a water pump, even though we've just got a 140mm tower cooler, but effectively we have the all the limits basically unleashed. So I'm not entirely sure what is going on here. We do appear to be using more wattage, getting hotter for basically the same result between 
going to bed and waking up the next day and using the computer. So I'm really, really confused. So as far as I can tell at the moment, the actual contact frame may or may not be doing its job. There are some other caveats here. Now, this is a 13th gen part rather than the original 12th gen, which were where we started to see this problem initially. Maybe they have changed some of the design possibly, although we have been led to believe that the 12th and 13th gen in terms of substrate and IHS are identical, no differences whatsoever. And the same should be the fact for the socket. The difference being is I'm using a MSI Tomahawk B760 motherboard. So this is the 760 range. Obviously, they have made some slight refinements to it. Whether or not they've increased it, we have got a six layer PCB, it is reinforced, and maybe the actual retention mechanism has been improved or modified slightly. It doesn't appear to have been, but it looks the same. It does seem to have an extreme amount of tension. We don't seem to have any bending on the board as of yet. So yeah, I'm uh, really at a loss on this one. It was an interesting thing to go through, and I should say as well, massive shout out again to Rick H for sending this over for us to review. I'm really confused why it's not made a difference. And in fact, it seemed like it made things worse, although it does appear that there is something system-wise, which is basically just gone on the fritz and now started to use more power to get basically the same result. I'm really unsure what that is about, but what we will be doing is a follow-up. I have got a B660 motherboard from ASUS, which is currently being repaired at CCL, hopefully. Fingers crossed. So when that comes back, I will be getting a 12th gen chip and redoing all of my testing with this contact frame to see if it makes a difference then and seeing whether it is a difference between the 600 series boards and the 700 series boards or whatever the case may be. So please do let me know if you're running a 13th gen Intel processor with a modern 700 series motherboard, have you tried a contact frame? Are you experiencing similar things? Please do let me know. If you've got any other thoughts or comments, please do let me know in the comment section below because I would love to know your thoughts on this one. But I think that's going to wrap things up. Unfortunately, it's not been the most positive of news, but certainly it hasn't harmed performance in any way. It's basically just kept things exactly the same on this particular scenario. So, yeah, anyway, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll see you in that comment section and stop me from going insane. Thanks for watching.